Hi everyone and welcome to another video from DisparityPair.com. In this video we'll be talking about a very important part of your car and that is the alternator. You'll see what an alternator actually is, how does it work and what are the main parts. So stay tuned. DisparityPair.com be sure to visit us at our website despairrepair.com where you can find more useful car and driving tips. An alternator is an electric generator that uses the mechanical energy of the car's engine to produce electrical energy. More simply put, it produces all the electricity for a car. It is in charge of supplying the car's many systems, appliances and installations with electricity while at the same time while the engine is running, it recharges the battery. It is so important that when the alternator doesn't work properly, the car is practically useless as it quickly runs out of electricity as soon as the battery is depleted. One more important thing to know, the alternator is a generator of alternating current, also known as AC, while the car uses direct current, known as DC. You may ask why is this peculiar and perhaps complicated solution used? Well, an AC generator is by construction much more durable, efficient and provides a more stable power supply than a DC generator. By adding a rectifier to an AC generator, the car gets a much more powerful, better and more reliable machine for producing electricity which was in car construction a major step forward. In order to properly understand how the alternator works, we'll first state the main parts. We're showing this example on an older type of alternator, but the basic principle and parts are the same for the modern types also. The rotor. The rotor is the moving part of the alternator. It consists of a shaft and on this shaft are claw-like finger poles with a coil of copper wire inside. It also has two copper slip rings on which the brushes from the voltage regulator sit on. The rotor is essentially a big electromagnet in charge of creating an electric field within the alternator. The stator. The stator is the stationary part of the alternator. It's located in the rear bracket and is easily recognized by the thick lacquered copper wires winded in it. The stator has the task of inducing electricity within it that is produced together with the rotor. The rectifier. The rectifier consists of a set of diodes that turns alternate current into direct current which then goes into the car's electric installation. The voltage regulator. The voltage regulator as its name says regulates the voltage coming out of the alternator. This is necessary since the alternator rotates at unequal speeds together with the engine and without the regulator the alternator would produce more or less electricity depending on the engine revs. Both would be harmful or damage the electric installation and appliances. The front and rear brackets. The front bracket usually has an anchor for holding the alternator to the engine and houses the front bearing for the rotor. In the rear bracket is the stator, rectifier, voltage regulator and rear bearing for the rotor. It may or may not have an anchor on it depending on the type of alternator. Pulley. The pulley is the part that gives leverage to the serpentine belt, in older cases the V-belt, and enables the engine to spin the rotor. Front and rear bearings. As mentioned there are two bearings on the rotor. The front one is in the front bracket and the rear one is usually mounted onto the rotor and then into the rear bracket, although there are exemptions. The ventilator. The ventilator has the purpose of pushing air into the alternator and keeping it cooled down. In this case it's mounted outside of the alternator. In more modern versions the ventilator is inside the alternator between the bracket and the rotor. Protective cap. Some alternators may have a rear removable protective cap usually made out of plastic. The basic principle of how an alternator works would be when you turn the ignition key to the first stage, when the dashboard warning light for the battery appears, an initial input signal from the battery is sent to the alternator. This input is necessary to energize the rotor and create a magnetic field.
the input signal goes through the voltage regulator, onto the slip rings and into the copper coil of the rotor. Once the engine is started and running, alternate current starts inducing in the stator. From here it goes through the rectifier and turns into direct current which the car uses. The battery warning light on the dash goes off the moment the alternator starts producing electricity. While the engine is running, the voltage regulator keeps the voltage stable regardless of the engine rev count. In cars, the standard voltage is about 14.5 volts, in trucks and bigger pickups it's 24 volts. If you want to see how to measure the voltage output of an alternator, click on the card in the corner to watch a video dedicated specifically to that topic. When you turn off the engine, the alternator momentarily stops working and the whole procedure is repeated once you start the engine again. In our next video you can see other important things regarding the alternator, namely how to find it in the engine bay, what are the main characteristics, for instance if you have to replace it, and how it's connected to the car's electric installation. I must say in the end that the alternator is nothing short of an engineering marvel. Without it, cars wouldn't be able to evolve to what they are today, especially regarding electronics. On this part, a big thank you is in place for each and every person in history who made the alternator, but also made it possible to be used in a car. So that's it for this time, please like and subscribe, it's a huge help for what we're doing. Thanks for watching and thanks for your time.